one of the things that I sometimes hear from the typical internet infidel crowd when I when they say something like, oh, there's no evidence for God, and I say, well, what about the Kalam cosmological argument? They'll say, oh, well, arguments are not evidence. Arguments are not evidence. This is a really... I really can't sugarcoat it, but it's a really foolish thing to say. It doesn't understand the nature of arguments. It doesn't understand what an argument is. I like to say it like this. An argument is a verbal articulation of an interpretation of evidence. Let me say that again. An argument is a verbal interpretation uh, an argument is a verbal articulation of an interpretation of evidence. So, in a court of law, for example, you have evidence. You have eyewitnesses who said that they saw so-and-so commit the crime. You have the murder weapon with the fingerprints of the killer on the murder weapon. You have... Eyewitness reports uh, saying that uh, the murderer sped away from the the not the the scene on the night of the crime, driving a red Corvette, and the suspect on trial drives a red Corvette, just like the eyewitness reports say. Um, detectives, when they went to his house, they found. Uh, bleached clothes his clothes had been you know really chemically cleaned uh, and all of this mounts to a cumulative case towards his guilt but if all you had were like these pieces of evidence you had the corvette you had the murder weapon with the fingerprints you had the the chemically spot clean clothes and the prosecutor just never opened his mouth and the defense attorney never opened their mouths, and all you just had were these Exhibit A, Exhibit B, B Exhibit C, Exhibit C, just sitting in the courtroom. <laughs> no verdict would ever be reached. Prosecutors argue their case that the best interpretation of the evidence is that the suspect, you know, the the uh, the person, the defendant. Is guilty now the defense attorney is going to try to argue against that and say oh no this is not that this evidence can be interpreted in another way and it's it's not as clear-cut as the prosecution is trying to make it out to be um this is a non-theological non-apologetical context an example of where you have evidence and you have arguments and the arguments coming from the prosecutor and defense attorney respectively, are verbal articulations of that evidence. So, the Kalam cosmological argument takes the evidence of, say, the origin of the universe from Big Bang cosmology, the second law of thermodynamics, um, the uniform nature, the uniform experience we have of everything that begins to exist has a cause, uh, you know, this the premise is constantly verified and never falsified. Uh, we know the nature of nothing is that it is no thing. It's what rocks dream about, as Socrates calls it, and therefore it has no causal properties. Uh, inductive arguments that every time we see something come into being, it has a cause. So we've got evidence for the law of causality. We've got evidence for the origin of the universe. And what proponents of say, the Kalam cosmological argument do is they interpret this evidence to conclude the universe must have a transcendent cause. And then after that, we give logical arguments for why the cause must be spaceless, timeless, immaterial, must have the attributes that we commonly ascribe to God. And I have other, I have earlier TikTok videos on this subject. And the fine-tuning argument takes the evidence of the finely tuned nature of the universe and argues that intelligent design is the best explanation. So, atheists, please, stop with this silly rhetoric that arguments are not evidence, and Christians, don't fall for it. If you ever are in a conversation with a skeptic and they say something like this, call them out on it. 
tell explain to them what an argument really is because this person who is saying this obviously doesn't know i certainly don't i certainly hope you don't think i was intending to give an in-depth defense of the kalam cosmological argument when you say that i was skipping over the facts and heading straight to the interpretation that was just an example of an argument that uses evidence in the case of the kalam it would be the evidence from the origin of the universe the law of causality etc and puts them into an interpretive framework which you then articulate and it is called an argument now you can disagree that that argument is sound that's fine we can debate that we can debate um whether both of the premises are true and Therefore, it, whether uh, affirming the conclusion is valid, but that doesn't, the fact that you don't think that the Kalam cosmological argument is a valid argument doesn't do anything to undermine anything I said in the prior video. Now, if you do want to hear me defend this argument or, or any other argument for the existence of God, then just scroll through my TikTok page, or if you want, you know, if you really want more in-depth content than the short-form content that TikTok allows, I recommend checking out my website, www.cerebralfaith.net. I've got lots of blog articles, podcast episodes, uh, YouTube videos embedded on that website. Uh, in fact, the podcast recently started up, and, and I am going through a series that is mirroring the blog series in fact it's actually an audio version of that blog series where i defend the historical trustworthiness of the gospels but very early in the podcast days the first few episodes i talk about the kalam cosmological argument the fine-tuning argument the moral argument but i wasn't attempting to defend that argument here in this video i was just using that as an example of, of an argument that uses evidence just like with the lawyers, they use the gun, the clothes, uh, the eyewitness description of the cards, that are those are evidences, but then they argue on the basis of that evidence that the best explanation is that the defendant is guilty. So likewise, I can argue on the basis of the origin of the universe, and the fine-tuning of the universe, that Theism is the best explanation of these facts.